Here's the problem. You have to create 20 customized letters, each with a different inside address and salutation. And here's the solution. Mail Merge. Mail Merge is this incredibly powerful tool included with Microsoft Word that enables you to create dozens of customized letters, envelopes, mailing labels, reports, and all sorts of other documents. And these documents would normally take you hours. But with Mail Merge, you can do all this in just a few mouse clicks. Hi, I'm Rich Malloy here at the Tech Help Today channel on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Mail Merge in just six easy steps. I hope you find this information useful. And if so, please consider subscribing so you can keep up with our other videos on getting the most out of your Office apps. In this demonstration, we're going to perform a fairly typical Mail Merge task. We're going to start with two things, a list of a dozen names and addresses and the letter. And we're going to use Mail Merge to create a dozen customized letters. To make it as easy as possible, we're going to use a feature in the Windows version of Word called the Step-by-Step -Step Mail Merge Wizard. Wizards are wonderful features that guide you through certain difficult tasks. Unfortunately, the wizard is not available in the Macintosh version of Word. If you're using a Mac, take a look at our video on Easy Mail Merge for the Mac. I will be using the latest Microsoft 365 version of Word, but the procedure is practically identical for almost all older versions of Word. Before we get started, let's make sure we have everything we need. First, as I mentioned before, we need a list of names and addresses. I'm going to pretend that we are working for a charitable foundation and we need to send out letters thanking a list of donors for their recent contributions. This list is technically called a data source. Most people use Excel to create their data sources, so that's what we will do. Here's a list of 12 donors, each with names, addresses, and a recent contribution. To get a copy of this Excel file, just click on the link in the description below. Because we are using Excel, we had to do a little fancy footwork with the zip codes. In some states in the US, the zip code starts with a zero. But Excel thinks the zip code is a number, and it automatically deletes the leading zero, thinking it is unnecessary. To preserve the leading zeros, I added a dash at the end of each zip code, which signals to Excel that the code should be treated as text and not adjusted. You can tell that the zip codes are now text because they are on the left sides of the cells. The other thing we need is a letter to send to our donors. Here's a letter I already created in Word. It simply thanks the donors and tells them how great they are. Again, you can download the Word file by clicking the link below in the description. Note that this letter is pretty much complete. All that is missing is the inside address, the salutation or greeting line. You know the part that says, Dear Jennifer. And in the first paragraph, there is even some space for the actual amount of the donor's contribution. Okay, we have our letter open in Word. Let's get started with the first of the six steps. So we go to the mailings ribbon, and you guessed it, we click Start Mail Merge. The menu lists all the different documents we can create with Mail Merge, but we want the bottom choice, the step-by-step -step Mail Merge Wizard. The wizard opens a task pane on the right side of the window. In the first step, the wizard is just asking us, what type of document we are working on. As I mentioned before, we have a number of choices. By default, it chooses letters, which is exactly right. So all we need to do is click the Next button in the lower right corner. That was easy. One down, five more steps to go. In step two, the wizard wants to know which Word document we want to use. The third choice lets us create a new document based on the previous one. That could be kind of handy, but we already have our document open, so all we need to do is accept the default choice, which is use the current document. So we click the Next button and go on to step three. That was easy. Two steps, two mouse clicks. Not bad. In step three, the wizard is asking us about the people we want to send our letter to. As you can see, if we don't already have a list, you can use the third choice to create a list right here. But we do have a list, so we'll accept the default choice of use an existing list. And now we must tell the wizard where that address list is. We click the Browse button and just browse to the Excel file I showed you earlier. By default, Mail Merge always looks in a new folder it creates called My Data Sources. But our Excel file is located somewhere else, so we just browse to that folder and choose the file. Now, because it is an Excel workbook, the wizard asks us which worksheet we want to use. And there is really only one worksheet in our Excel file, so if, if the wizard was really a real wizard, it would have already known the answer. But remember, it's only a computer program. So we just click the OK button. Then we get to choose which of the recipients in our list should get our letter. We could select individuals by just using the checkboxes, or we can select groups of individuals by clicking the arrows in the column headers. For example, we can choose to send the letter only to people in Connecticut and Massachusetts. 
But let's undo that and send it to everybody. Also note that we can sort our recipients. If we have a large list, we can save on postage by sorting our recipients by zip code. Our list is small, so we don't care about that, but we do want to be sure our list is in alphabetical order. This will make it easy to match up our letters with their corresponding envelopes or mailing labels. We sort a list first by first name and then by last name. All we need to do now is click the OK button and go on to step four. In step four, the wizard wants us to write our letter. Well, you say, we've already written our letter, but not quite. Here is where we get to add the special mail merge parts. A couple of these parts are listed in the task pane at the right. There is the address block, which gives us the inside address, and the greeting line. Note that Mail Merge has created these merge fields designated by double angle brackets. Let's click the Preview Results button in the Mailings ribbon to see what they really look like. Hmm. If these two buttons work fine for you, okay, that's great, but most of the time they don't. As in this case, look at the mistakes here and here. So let's undo that and turn off the preview results button. And now let's try it again using a more traditional approach. This will take a little longer, but it will give you a better idea of how mail merge works. Now what we're going to do is click more items. Instead of creating the inside address automatically, we're going to build it ourselves. And in the first line of the inside address is the title and name of our recipient. So we click title. Notice that a merge field called title appears in our letter. This simply tells Mail Merge to insert an item from the title column of our Excel list in this location. Then insert first name and then last name. And now we can close or cancel the insert merge field dialog. You might notice there's something missing between the merge fields spaces. It would be so nice if Mail Merge would automatically insert those spaces. But no, we have to do it ourselves. Just click between the double angle brackets and tap the spacebar. Let's do the same thing between the first and last names. Now we tap the enter or return key and go on to the next line. Sometimes the second line of the inside address is a company name, but our recipients all have home addresses, so it's simply the street address. To insert the street address, we'll use a different technique, which is a little easier. Up in the mailings ribbon, there is a button for insert merge field, but this is one of those two-part buttons. Be sure to click the bottom half. That shows a menu of items, and we can just click on Street and tap the Enter key. The next line is the City, comma, Space, comma, State, Space, and Zip. Don't forget those spaces. Word will usually put some space after each line, which is unnecessary here. So we will remove the space by selecting the first two lines and setting the After Space to zero on the Layout ribbon. Now we have to do the greeting line or salutation. We'll type dear and insert the title again, a space, and the last name. Make sure there is a colon after the last name. And finally, one more thing. We have to insert the donation amount. We will click right after the dollar sign in the first sentence and insert the donation field. It looks a little strange of all these merge fields, but here's the good news. We're all finished with step four. That was the hard step. The last two steps are a piece of cake. So let's click the Next button and go on to step five. Look at this. Much better, right? Now Mail Merge has replaced the merge fields with actual data from our Excel file. To see how each address will look, we can use the arrow button in the task pane at the right or the button in the mailings ribbon above. Our job here is simple. Just look for problems. And here's one. We somehow forgot to put a space between the state and the zip code. No problem. We just click and tap the space bar. Ooh, here's another problem. There should not be a space between the dollar sign and the number. Again, no problem. We'll just delete it. Let's check the addresses again. Pretty good. Now, just one more step. Now, on to the last step. Step six. Here is where we actually merge our address list with our letter. As you can see in the task pane on the right, there are two choices. We can print all of our letters, or we can create a file containing each of the letters. This last choice will enable us to edit the individual letters to customize them even further before printing them. Click Edit Individual Letters. Mail Merge then asks if we want to merge all the records or rows in our address list. Usually, we click OK. Now Mail Merge creates a new document entitled Letters which consists of several pages. Each page is a different letter. To see each letter, we can simply scroll down in the document. Let's say that one of the donations was particularly generous. 
in the last letter, we can modify the text in the first sentence to signify that we are especially grateful for this donation. Another advantage of creating this new document is that it gives us another chance to check for errors. Everything looks good, so all we need to do is print the file. Just click File and Print. Once we have finished printing, we can close the letters file. Note that we do not need to save it. We can always recreate it by clicking the Edit Individual Letters button. But we definitely need to save our letter document. We can use it again when we get a new batch of donations. All we need to do is update all the rows or records in the Excel file and then run the Mail Merge wizard again. So that's it. Mail Merge in six steps. Not too bad, right? You now have a dozen customized letters printed. All you need now are some printed envelopes or mailing labels, which can also be done with Mail Merge. But that's the subject for another video. Before we end this, I do have to warn you about one of the most annoying problems with Mail Merge. This amazingly powerful feature sometimes doesn't know how to format numbers. If you click the Preview Results button to turn it on and go to the last letter, you will notice that the donation amount is lacking a comma to separate thousands. The comma was in the Excel file, but now it's gone. There is a way to fix this. In fact, there are three ways to fix this, which I outline in another video. Check the link in the description below. So that's it. Now you know Mail Merge. Personally, I'm a big fan of Mail Merge. It has a few rough edges, but I love how it can save me countless hours of drudgery. I hope you will enjoy using it too. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel. If you do so, you'll have an easier time accessing our other videos on these amazing Microsoft Office apps. Thanks for watching.